So the first uh, vertical today is consumer products. Um, actually, both of them are consumer products, just in a variety of different ways. So sometimes they get on a kick, like last week was primarily automotive. This week, we are going to talk about consumer products, and we'll have two different really neat examples, I think, um, to go to. So to start off with, this first one was you uh, handheld was used a lot like this one here, this one right there, or these these handhelds right here, very similar to these. Could you could accomplish this same uh, this same application? So if I roll to the next one, um, almost everybody, at least in the Americas market, I know we have people from around the the globe joining in on this webinar. Um, Many people have seen the uh, commercials for the floor mat companies that are creating custom floor mats for vehicles. And that whole market changed when 3D scanning and handhelds became down to a certain price level um, to where you could scan cars, many different models of cars and create custom floor mats um, and you'll see that like everybody should be familiar. They have commercials running um, all over showing uh, custom floor mats. And in some of the commercials, you'll notice that they even show a 3D scanner capturing the data as part of their marketing to show the value that they're providing where it's customized to fit that specific model that you select. And it's not a generic floor mat like what we used to have to purchase uh, in the past. Now companies are able to quickly reverse engineer and create customizable floor mats. Um, so with this one, I will point out, you know, if you do scanning, you're, you may be looking at this scan data and are like, wow, that's not the best. Is that scan data a little bit melted? This is an older, uh, application with a very old handheld scanning device. So you'll see that this one, you know, the data isn't as good because we've been, this one, we solved this problem many, many, many years ago. Um, and we were one of the first to partner with a scanner company to do this application. And it is one of the most popular success stories that I've seen that gets a very general traction in the market as far as people understanding, like even when I'm at a cookout with friends, I can say, have you seen the, the floor mat commercial where they scan a floor mat and they make a customized model? That's something along the lines of what I do. And, and people tend to understand uh, that when I explain it to them. So let's go ahead and jump over to Design X and you'll see, like I said, this is a, uh, a data set that we've had for a long time. It's not the greatest example of a scan data set, but it is a very good example of what you can do where you can reverse engineer and create a design like this that matches up with the specific model. So as usual, remember the format here is I load up uh, a model and then we roll back because just to remind everybody who's new to the webinar, Design X is a history-based CAD modeler that um, I can roll back in the history on the left-hand side. Um, but one of our major differences is that scan data is not a second-class citizen in our product, where the scan data is a native object in the history tree. So you see I have this copied point cloud that's actually not a point cloud anymore. It's a mesh here. And if I turn off my CAD, you'll see that this is a scan data set and I can render this polygon as a triangle object. So the historic problem, right, with CAD is if you, if you bring in this mesh inside of a CAD package um, and you load it up and you try to do anything with it, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Right, it's very difficult to work with scan data in CAD packages because the types of models that they are primarily used to working with are NURBS surfaces. That is the technology that CAD is built on, non-uniform rational B-spline or basis spline. 
And <clears throat> scan data is point clouds and polygons, where point clouds are generated from scanners that just capture mass point clouds, mass 3D measurements in space, and then we connect them together into triangles like we do here. Um, but that's still, it's a 3D object, but it's a different family of 3D object from the NURB surfaces, which is why we made Design X, again, just to reiterate it a different way here, is Design X, I can select geometry here and fit NURB surfaces to polygon surfaces. And that's the gist of what our goal here is. So if we roll back and we take a step forward, and I'll just roll forward, you'll see that the first thing we did is we did an extrusion. Now, how did we create that sketch for that extrusion? Let me just uh, briefly show that the mesh sketch setup. So it's Design X has that ability to create mesh sketches. So we can create sketches, but we can also create them so they're on the, in here, just a second, occasionally this happens with, um, with the uh, software, with GoToMeeting. There we go, we should be back to normal here. So every once in a while I have an issue with um, uh, GoToWebinar, just doing that thing where it zooms in and out or whatever. Um, so there we go. Um, so if I do a mesh sketch setup, this allows us to cut a cross section through this polygon and you'll see that it's cut through the polygon right there. And if I go ahead and cancel out of the setup and then go into the sketch itself, I can turn off uh, the polygon and then I can go normal too. You'll see that we have the ability to sketch directly over that scan data and just to reiterate, I know I've shown this in, in webinars, but for anybody that hasn't seen, I have that ability to draw sketch entities wherever I want, but I can also best fit them to the data that's here. So you see if I want to, now I'm not trying to draw this area right here, but you'll see I have the ability to fit stuff directly to that scan data and it makes it so much faster, exponentially faster to draw directly over the scan data when I can fit to it and I can snap to it and I can utilize that data. <clears throat> so we went ahead and we created that first extrude and we created this second extrude and we'll just go, go ahead and turn on this mesh here. And um, with this second extrude, you'll see that we just created a mesh sketch from the side and they drew that there. And you'll notice we went ahead and trimmed those together. So now that's our first start. And then we went ahead and created a fillet there. And you'll see that we, we're we gonna account for this area as well here. So they, they chose in this instance here, to go ahead and create a, a planar surface there. And we'll, we'll just see how they went about fitting these surfaces here. And you see here that they trimmed all, they're, they're going to trim all those together, but they went ahead and fit those all. And if I just stop real quick and I turn off those mesh surfaces, I just wanna show real quick what they did. Um, you can come over and you can grab you can grab a tool like the paintbrush and you can select an area on the mesh and then you can create a region for it so i can create a region there for it and you see that now we have all of our regions on um and one we'll So I got a message saying that somebody lost my audio.
Hopefully that is back. If somebody... Okay, we are back. So I will continue on. Hopefully we don't have any more audio problems here as I continue along. So you'll see that I can fit that plane to that region there and I'm fitting it directly to the polygon and that's exactly what they did in this instance. So I'll just go ahead and cancel out of it. Discard and then we will turn my regions off and continue through the workflow here. So I'll go ahead and turn on, turn on the planes and take a step forward. So we'll go ahead and toggle forward a couple trims and you see that we were able to trim those together. And then you'll see that they go ahead and fill it both of those too. fill it those together and then we'll continue on the extraction here so the next step we roll forward they're going to switch over to the the other side and then go ahead and trim that to the surrounding data fit another from this side you'll see that they're they fit We'll just turn the surfaces off for a second. They fit a surface to this area here and then um, to that area too. So if I toggle these back on, so they did an extruded surface and then fit a planar surface there, trim those together to account for that, and then go ahead and apply the fillets to all of it. And you'll see here, now we're gonna go ahead and switch back over to this side here. And we'll turn off the mesh. Now we're gonna start working on this front firewall area. So we work on that and go ahead and trim those two pieces together. And fill it this. So some of the value here with these with these models is being able to see how somebody would approach modeling this. So as you look at it, you think about how I would approach it. And then seeing this will show how somebody else has approached modeling the, the part themselves. And you see here that we went ahead and fit this area. And then fit that area from the top and then trim it all together. So you see here, just to turn that off and on. And they go ahead and fit that. Now we go ahead and add a few more fillets there. And this is what we have so far. And then we can keep moving forward. So in this instance, they went ahead and they extruded this area as a solid itself instead of surfaces, and then went ahead and filleted that, and then went and deleted faces Sometimes that helps. So like if you're going to create a really big fillet of some sort, you could create that as a bounded shape, as a solid fillet that. That's what they did here. Because you see how that fillet bisects the other geometry there. And then that allows you to then delete the rest of the faces later and then come in and trim it in with the rest here. And then now they're going to do some fillet work to blend it all together. And then now you see that they went ahead and created this uh, top surface plane. We'll see what they do with that. They apply a fillet there to the side. 
and then they're going to go ahead and do a thickened surface and then a cut with that top surface plane. Now we'll go ahead and turn that top surface plane. So you see how they were able to thicken that and then apply fillets around the edges. And then they use the emboss tool, which is really nice. So with emboss, if, you, if we come in here and we edit the sketch, they went ahead and drew all of the pattern shapes. So if you had the logo text or whatever, you could put that all inside of this sketch here. And then once you have it all inside of that sketch, you can use the emboss tool, which is really nice here. This is the one that I, have, I haven't talked about yet on the um, webinar, but with emboss, I can select a sketch and I can select uh, a CAD body and you can add a thickness. So this is going to project down, offset up and trim to one millimeter thick is essentially what's gonna happen there. So you see here, we created these one millimeter embosses on the surface. So it's a tool that you, you used to be able to do in multiple steps, but emboss just allows you to do it all as one uh, feature in the feature tree. And then if I just roll forward, they cut the hole in the floor mats, which is very important because they, a lot of the cars have these things where you can um, snap it down and keep it from moving around. So this is the first example part, um, the floor mat um, activity. And there's a bunch of different ways you could go about modeling this, but that is a really neat application where you can um, model a custom aftermarket floor mat um, from uh, scan data.